Hello, this is Dr. Jane again, and uh, selecting from these little books, um, I chose The Elephant Family, and the one I'm going to read to you today is about elephants, because I've always loved elephants. And so, here we go, The Elephant Family by Jane Goodall. Actually, my husband, Hugo, took quite a few of these photographs, and so it's truly amazing to see how an elephant can destroy a whole tree. This huge female is called Mama. She reaches high up with her trunk, curls it around a branch and pulls. Crack! She pulls it down. Nearby, some of her family work on another tree. An elephant can even knock a big tree over just by pushing with his head. That's how strong they are. Mama makes a rumbling sound of pleasure. Winding her trunk around a branch, she strips off the leaves and pops them into her mouth. Soon, other elephants come to share the leaves. None of them could reach them before. They're Mama's sisters and aunts and her eldest daughter. Mama is the leader of this family group. One of the females, Hazel, has twin sons named Horace and Henry. They stay close to their mother as she feeds. Horace curls his trunk back out of the way and suckles from one of the two teats between Hazel's front legs. It's not often that twin elephants are born, so we're observing this pair very carefully. Two of the Tanzanian park rangers are following these elephants almost every day. So we learn more and more about them as individuals because they're all different. The elephants feed peacefully until a nine-year-old male named Oscar tries to join in. One of the females threatens him, playfully really, tossing her head and trunk and flapping her huge ears. He stands his ground, so she charges at him trumpeting. Oscar runs off. He stops and watches the females for a while, then chases after a bird. When Oscar's about 13, he'll leave his family group and join some adult males. The big males only travel with family groups when one of the females is ready to start a baby. The elephants move towards a water hole. They love water. They find five big males already there. One of them is the oldest elephant I've ever seen. His name is Kibiongo. His teeth are worn away, his tusks as well. His ears have drooped and his skin has fallen in wrinkles around his ankles. His companions often help him. Sometimes they hold down branches so he can feed off the soft leaves at the end. He's not strong enough anymore to get them for himself. I loved Kibionga. Elephants always try to help companions who are very old or sick or wounded. They grieve when a group member dies and cover the body with branches and earth. They're very intelligent and their feelings, happiness, sadness, fear, despair, grief, they're so much like ours. Kibiongo and the other males greet the females, gently touching their mouths and behind their ears with their trunks. And then the elephants really start to enjoy themselves. They suck up water and squirt it into their mouths. They lie down in the mud and cover their skins. They squirt water over themselves. The little ones play, charging about with outstretched ears and trumpeting loudly. Elephants need water. If you see them in a zoo where there's no water, you tell somebody about it. Kibiongo and his friends soon leave, gleaming with wet black mud. Mama and her family rest in the shade. The little ones suckle, then stretch out with some of the adults standing around protectively. One of the females rests her trunk over her tusks. I love to see that. In the late afternoon, they move on. They travel slowly because there's one very tiny baby, only a week old. 
He can't go very fast. He even trips over his own trunk. He hasn't learned how to control it properly. They all pause once to feed on the dry grass or to drink water from another water hole. In the old days, when the elephants roamed for miles and miles, the damage they did to the trees didn't matter much. There were many more trees, and slowly new ones grew. Today it's different. There are so many people. There is less and less room for the elephants. When they kill the trees where they live, there's nowhere else for them to go. In the cool of the evening, the elephants stop to feed again. Another family group appears, moving silently on their huge feet. The leaders of the two groups greet, twining their trunks. There are many more greetings. Oscar charges an elephant of the same age from the other group. They trumpet loudly, and there's a clashing of little tusks. Then Oscar, who's a bit bigger, chases the other away. Very proud of himself. Gradually they calm down. The twins suckle again. The tiny baby keeps very close to his mother, often standing right underneath her. It's very peaceful. When I drive away, they're all feeding quietly together, dark shadows in the last light of evening. Elephants need all the help we can give them. They're poached for their tusks, they're shot, and they're so beautiful, so wonderful, such gentle giants, such great personalities. I hope you'll help us to help them. Thank you.